It's your boy Elzo KJ300. Y'all know I'm coming. Welcome to another episode of the Digit Show. And if you don't already, follow me on Instagram. And everybody on the last day has been talking about Le'Veon Bell. And I see so many people say he's selfish. He should have took the money and stuff like this. I just want people to realize Le'Veon Bell is not your regular running back. You not just giving him the ball and say run the ball. Just run it every time. You are literally giving him the ball around 400, 300 and something to 400 times a year with that's with him running the ball and him catching the ball. You putting him at receiver. He one of your best receivers. He your best running back. He is the best running back in the league. And you still trying to pay me fifteen million dollars. I don't understand it. You trying to pay me like a regular running back and I'm not regular. Um he accounts for half of this offense. If y'all realize how many packages he was in, he is a every down back and every time he is on the field the linebackers and the defense has to look at him. It makes it easier for Antonio Brown now to be one-on-one with Le'Veon Bell on the field. When Le'Veon Bell gets the ball, he is the most patient runner. He is going to get yards every single time. People acting, I really, I don't understand why people are so mad at Le'Veon Bell because he wants more money. And then you look at Antonio Brown, Ben Rosenberg, everybody else getting that money. Why ain't getting my money? I contribute to this team just as much if not more, than some of these players, but they get their money because I'm a running back. I'm a running back, so y'all think I'm going to get hurt or something like that. But every time I'm on the field, y'all want to use me in every down. Y'all want to put me a receiver. Y'all want me to go out there and catch balls. Y'all want me to run and do all this, but y'all don't want to pay me my money. I, I completely understand. And people say, oh, he's selfish because he's not for the team. Antonio Brown gets his money. It is for the team. I play for this team, and I play hard for this team, but you are going to have to pay me. I'm not a clown. That's why I, I, I hate the fact that they, they say the NFL, the NFL is so much of the, is the most popular league in America, but they don't get paid like the NBA and the MLB. All these players get guaranteed money, and you try to, you're you not trying to guarantee Le'Veon Bell all his money when he is the best running back and the most versatile running back in the league. Literally. And he wants to get paid like a elite offensive weapon. You put him anywhere on the offense, and he is going to be a problem. Receiver, running back, he can block, he can catch pass, he can do everything you want him to do, and you still gonna pay me like a regular running back. I don't understand it. So I've always said that the NFL needs to guarantee, like y'all do the quarterbacks. Stop acting like the quarterback is just the best things in the world. You have a elite quarterback, if you have a elite running back and receiver, put them out there and. Pay them like they are elite, just like the quarterbacks. And I think the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, last year and probably going to this year besides the Falcons are the most stacked team on offense, and they don't ever win. And Le'Veon Bell is a huge piece of that. If Le'Veon Bell is gone, they're not stacked as they usually be. Le'Veon Bell, Ben Rosberger, Antonio Brown, got Juju Smith, and you telling me Le'Veon Bell don't need to get paid his money. I do. I actually do. And for all these upcoming running backs, like Ty Gurley, who I, you put him at receiver too, he going to want the same thing. Stop paying me like I'm regular. Like I'm just a, uh, I'm here. I'm uh, I'm running ball, do do a zone, do this. You put me at receiver. You making me run strings. But I, I get paid like a regular running back. I'm not. I am not. Um, You, ha- you have people that go out there on third down that be a receiver uh, running back. And Le'Veon Bell is out there every single down. And he need to get paid like a re- um like a running back and a receiver. Because that's how y'all play me. Now, if y'all would put me at just running back, i see. And then uh, people saying, well, they need to just let him go. And then he go get him money somewhere else. The Steelers are not going to be as good if you let Le'Veon Bell go. If you let him go, they are not going to be as good. You give me the ball 400 times in a year. You make me run the ball and you throw me the ball. And I'm excellent at both. And... Y'all gonna just let him go. Okay, we'll see. Everybody out like running back is just so easy a position to uh to actually play. And when Le'Veon Bell leave, and if he leave, if he sit out, I still don't have a problem with it. If Le'Veon Bell sit out, I don't have a problem with it. Because he gonna be a free agent and he gonna leave. And we're gonna see how good they be. Antonio Brown wants Le'Veon Bell. Bill Rosberger wants Le'Veon Bell. Um Le'Veon Bell bail out half of that offense some of the times. He bail him out. So stop acting like yeah, Le'Veon Bell, he should have took the money. He's selfish. He is not selfish. He deserves his money. Just like everybody else in the world deserves their money in every other sport. And y'all don't guarantee running backs money because they running backs. They might get hurt. Everybody get hurt. Everybody get hurt. Um, so like I said, Le'Veon Bell deserves his money. So, reportedly, uh, the Lakers and Sixers have given up uh, training for Kawhi Leonard. 
And I felt like the Lakers was the first because you were going to trade Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, and jo Josh Hart. I think that was a trade. And that wasn't going to happen. I'm not trading you Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, and Josh Hart. I'm sorry. When I know that Kawhi Leonard wants to come here, and I already got the start that I wanted uh, LeBron James. So I felt like they was gone right after LeBron James came. And LeBron wanted to keep Kyle Kuzma um, and Brandon Ingram and Josh Hart. Um, the Sixers. I, I really don't know what they were going to trade to get uh, Kawhi Leonard. So I don't know the details on that. So I guess they just gave up after they couldn't get LeBron and they just felt like Kawhi Leonard is going to be too much. They would have to give up one of their uh, star players. Now for the Raptors, when the new person came in, he said that everybody is available for trade talks. So this would be a swap. It would be um, Kawhi Leonard who has accomplished more than um, DeMar DeRozan for DeMar DeRozan, a first rounder, and somebody else. It would be somebody else. A lot of people saying... The Raptors shouldn't do it. I don't feel like they should do it. I really don't because I don't think Kawhi Leonard is going to commit to the Raptors. DeMar DeRozan is committed to the uh, Raptors. He could have went to L.A. when he was a free agent, but he stayed there. I don't know why. Uh, him and Kyle Lowry is so um, loyal to the Raptors. And you trade DeMar DeRozan for Kawhi Leonard, somebody that I believe is going to leave next year. I don't think any star wants to play with the Raptors. I really don't. And... For the Spurs, it'll be a great trade. Kawhi Leonard wants out. You will send him to the East. He won't, You won't have to worry about him this year. And you will get DeMar DeRozan, somebody I think that is going to be, that would be a perfect fit for Greg Popovich right now. He is a old school type player. He is. He lives in the post. And they will revolve this offense around his man. Him and uh, Lamar Aldridge would be very good together. So I just feel like, with the Raptors, you trade uh, DeMar DeRozan, your star player, somebody that wants to be there, for somebody that doesn't want to be there, you'll, he'll be there for a year and be gone. And then you'll look up, and then the next year you'll have Kyle Lowry. Now, the only thing you have is Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan over here in the West have a potential chance to go to the finals and win when um, you gave up your head coach. Yeah, So that's why I said I don't, I don't feel like uh, this is false because they gave up the head coach because they couldn't beat LeBron James. I mean – it's not his fault that they couldn't beat LeBron and they folded when they played against LeBron. It's the only team they lost to. And now you want to give up uh, DeMar DeRozan for Kawhi Leonard, somebody that's going to be there for one year. So y'all let me know how y'all feel about that, but I really don't understand it. Yesterday, I watched the beginning and the end of this game. And as a Lakers fan, I love Josh Hart and what he's doing. He has transitioned from rookie to his sophomore year and it's going good right now. Him scoring 37 points, averaging 20-some points in the summer league. I know it's just a summer league, but at the end of the year last year, he was actually going off. He was actually playing very good defense for the Lakers, and it was something to build on. And he's and I always forget that he's 6'5". He looked shorter than what he is. And I saw that Matt Johnson said um, he's battling to start. And I see him at the 2. Is him and Caldwell Pope at the 2. I forget everybody keeps saying point guard, but I think he is more of a shooting guard. And... Him versus Colin Sexton. I loved Colin Sexton last night. The way I always say it, he is a dog. Well, a bull and his um well, his name is a young bull, but I classify everybody as a dog. He is a dog as in his men mentality. It wasn't always easy for Colin Sexton. He wasn't just ranked this high the highest dude in the world. And he has came out from high school to college to his summer league. And he is showing off, and he is being a dog. He had, I think, 20-some points last night, I think 27. And he was going at Josh Hart. He guarded him. When he got down in that stance, when it was tied up, and he got down in that stance like, let's go. Like, let's get it. And that's what you want from when you losing LeBron James. You want to build off something like a Colin Sexton because he is going to give you everything he has. And it was a great battle last night. Um, like I said, I love Josh Hart. He was going off. Uh, he is showing improvement. And people saying, yeah, it's just summer league. Like I said, it's just summer league. But it's something to build on. He will be in the rotation this year with the Lakers. Um, his value is going to go up. My biggest thing is Colin Sexton, though. I love how they was they weren't even ranked high, but he showed off the entire summer league. So I love exactly what he was doing. I see Colin Sexton as being a dog with the Cavaliers. They're going to have to end up getting rid of these contracts and building around him with some young people on the roster. But they can be a good team in the East. In the future, with him playing like this, him developing a um, 
a consistent shot, he already has a mentality. So I know he's going to work hard. Defensive-wise, he locked in. He locked in. I think he can guard point guards in his league because he is locked in. And um, he talked trash like I like to see. So he a dog. Like I um, said, Josh Hart, I love it. I love it. Uh, Some of the his second year, he should be doing this, and he's doing exactly what he should do. Uh, I like that he came back out here, and he is getting better. Uh, Kyle Sexton, I love it. I love it.